Greetings viewers, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're finally getting started on some of the repairs on my 1994 Subaru Sambar KS4. Today's video, we're gonna be removing the rocker cover, replacing the rocker cover gasket. Uh, it has been leaking for some time. While we have it off, we're gonna go ahead and do a valve adjustment. Uh, we will be doing timing belt and water pump, other services as well. But uh, given the age, uh, the mileage, and the fact we're already gonna have the rocker cover off, we need to go ahead and do a valve adjustment now while we have it off. So, first things first, we need to get some brake parts cleaner in here and clean all of the oil off from around the rocker cover uh, before we get into removing it. So, let's go ahead and get started on that. Uh, but first off, we have our new rocker cover gasket. This is not a Subaru Genuine. Uh, the, <laughs> I'm just now noticing the name brand is Ono. Oh O-H-N-O, part number SP-0001, made in Japan, rocker cover gasket. Uh, we've got our feeler gauges, which we will need for adjusting our uh, rockers. And other than that, we shouldn't need much more than 10 millimeter socket, a wrench, um, basic hand tool shouldn't be too involved. So let's go ahead and get this cleaned up and start the removal process. All right, now that we've got the rocker cover and surrounding area sprayed off a brake parts cleaner, get some of that oil out of the way, we'll go ahead and remove the spark plug wires from the spark plugs. We'll then remove the 10 mil bolts here holding down the uh, holders for the wires. Swing all this out of the way. And we'll throw the bolts back in their holes just to keep up with them. Now we can go ahead and remove our ground strap over here, which is a 12 mil. And set it off to the side, took it out of the way. Remove our breather hose up here at the top of the rocker cover. Squeeze the clamp, pull it back. Hose is a little hard. I'll take a pair of pliers and gently wiggle it back and forth to break it free from the nipple. and slide it up and tuck it back out of the way. Now we can remove the 10 millimeter bolts, or 10 millimeter headed bolts, holding the rocker cover in place. Appears to be six of them. And now we can remove our rocker cover. I gotta tell you, that's not exactly what I wanted to see when I pulled the rocker cover off. Uh, we got quite a bit of build up here. Uh, whoever owned this little sandbar did not uh, maintain it very well. As we can see from the build up here, uh, there's some oil sludge and just uh, all around bad build up, something you wouldn't see had they performed oil changes regularly. All right guys, now that we got the rocker cover off and we have the uh, engine set to TDC on cylinder one, uh, it's not really able, I'm not really able to get the camera in to show you the markings uh, for this, but I'll insert a picture I just took, as you saw, 
of the harmonic balancer as well as a screenshot from the factory service manual. There is a mark on the crank pulley indicating uh, TDC for cylinder one on compression. Uh, once we have that, then we can go ahead and we can adjust intake and exhaust rockers for cylinder one. We can adjust intake for cylinder two, and we can adjust exhaust for cylinder three. Once we have these four set, we can spin the engine uh, 360 degrees. And once that's set, we can do intake and exhaust for four. We can do the intake for three and the exhaust for two, and we will be done with the valve adjustment. So for our intake valves, we're gonna be setting them to 0.15 millimeters. For our exhaust rockers, they're set to 0.2 millimeters. I'll put the specifications again on the screen for you. And uh, we'll just go from there. Basically all you gotta do, if you've never adjusted valves before, is you'll put your feeler gauge between the tip of the rocker arm and the tip of the valve. And you will uh, loosen this 10 millimeter nut here. There's a flat head screw right here. Turn it in to make it tighter, turn it out to make it looser. You will turn this until the feeler gauge of the appropriate thickness has just a bare bit of drag on it. And uh, once that's set, you'll hold this steel, take a wrench, tighten the 10 millimeter nut down to jam it in place, and uh, move on. It's a fairly simple procedure to go through. So we'll go ahead and get started on that now. All right, so 0.2 mil on our exhaust rocker here. Take our feeler gauge and slide it between the end of the rocker and the tip of the valve. And it slides through uh, fairly easily. We might want to tighten that up just a hair. It feels a little bit loose, but it's very close. So what we'll do, as I said, we'll take a 10 millimeter wrench and we will crack the nut loose. just like so, and we will fill our drag, turn it just a hair, a little hair more, that's too far. That feels good right there. So we'll take our screwdriver tip, hold it perfectly in place, and just cinch the nut back down. And we'll recheck again. Just a good amount of drag, but we're still able to get in there. So that's set on that exhaust. So now we'll set the intake on number one cylinder, which is again, 0.15. Slide that in there. Feels a little loose as well. So again, take our nut, just crack it loose. Take our filler gauge. Seems we might have tightened it up too much when we broke it loose. That feels good right there. nut back down and recheck. Still get under it. We got a fair amount of drag, but nothing too substantial. So cylinder one is now set. As I said, now we can go and do intake on number two and then exhaust on number three.
noticed also that uh, here recently with the truck sitting the last month or two I haven't been driving it very much waiting for the parts to come in that I'm seeing some puff of smoke so most likely this thing needs some valve seals uh, honestly wish I was doing it all at once but I do not have the valve seals so uh, that will be a project for another day I mean we will most likely be going for another rocker cover gasket in the future Yep, that feels a little bit better right there. All right, so we're all set. We'll just spin the engine 360 and uh, adjust the rest of the valves. All right, just spun the crankshaft 360 degrees, align those marks again. Now number four, intake and exhaust are loose. That's a quick, easy way to check them. Just give them a little wiggle by hand so we know we can adjust these now. We can adjust intake on number three, exhaust on number two, clean this up and put the rocker cover back in place with the new gasket. Really loose over here. So guys, there is a torque specification for these jam nuts. Um, I don't have it offhand. I can look in the service manual or I can put it on the screen or both, uh, but it's a very minimal number. There's no reason to get a torque wrench out and um, to measure it. Uh, the torque on those nuts is 0 0.09 plus or minus 0 0.01 kilogram. Uh, KGM, all the specifications are completely in metric, so I'm not exactly sure what that is in Newton meters or foot pounds, uh, but very low, basically hand tight. Um, you know, nothing you need to really torque down on. You don't wanna break these little things or round them out. Number four over here is too tight. I can't even get my feeler gauge under it. Uh, so we will need to loosen that up. Uh, if your valves are too tight, it can actually cause them to hang open. And uh, when they hang open, they don't fully seat. Uh, you don't get good compression in that cylinder. Uh, also, the valve does not transfer the heat from the valve into the head by not being able to make direct contact, full contact with the valve seat. Uh, so you can damage and burn a valve up and just have a poor running engine by not having your valves properly adjusted. So just something to keep in mind that yes, uh, those that are adjustable, uh, it is a good idea to keep them adjusted, check on them at the recommended service intervals. Feels great right there. All right, so now all our valves are properly adjusted. We can start cleaning up our mounting surface, sealing surface, and start cleaning the rocker cover, putting the new gasket in place, and uh, reinstall. All right, now that we've got all our valves set, we can go ahead and start cleaning 
up the ceiling surface and uh, prepping for the gasket and the installation, reinstallation of the rocker cover. Let's go along with a razor blade and gently scrape up all the crud here. We'll then take some brake part cleaner on a rag and go back around and uh, make sure it's nice and dry and clean. Be careful, this is aluminum cylinder head, so don't dig in with the razor blade, just skim across. Uh, this stuff shouldn't be on there too very, uh, too stuck where you need to really dig in with the razor blade. And be mindful when cleaning the top, you don't want to knock all this junk into the engine. Or if you do, you want to minimize the amount of crud you knock in there. It would be advisable to go ahead and plan to do an oil change after this service just in case you do knock anything down into the head and it flushes into the oil pan uh, just to go ahead and do an oil filter change to get that out of the engine and uh, minimize risk of uh, you know it getting in to bearing surfaces etc well, some of that stuff does have some uh, grit to it some of these carbon chunks and uh, you definitely don't want that getting through the high pressure oil system I mean, most likely to be caught by the filter, but you never know. So just gonna go around and clean all this up and uh, we'll be back. All right guys, time for reassembly. Everything's cleaned up. I uh, cleaned the rocker cover as best I could. Did it off camera just because it's a quite long process. Uh, just basically used some uh, wire brushes, brake parts cleaner, uh, nothing, you know, really complex to do, just time consuming. So we've got our new rocker cover gasket. Gonna go ahead and install it in the grooves on the rocker cover and get ready to set it back in place on the engine. Uh, we'll probably do one more wipe down with a rag uh, covered in some brake parts cleaner just to make sure no oil residue has dripped down uh, you know on any of the ceiling surfaces while I was cleaning the rocker cover because I did clean this first so go ahead and press this new gasket into the cover get in there square get in there snug and we'll go ahead and get ready to lift it up into place there are uh, six little o-rings that go in the rocker cover between the bolt heads and the rocker cover so we'll have to replace those as well so i'm going to go ahead and just do those uh, without having to reposition the camera as you see there's just a little o-ring seal in each of these little pockets so i'm just going to swap those out real quick or pull them out actually uh, in preparation for reinstalling the rocker cover all right, so as I said, I'm going to take the rag, brake parts cleaner, wipe around one more time, just to be sure. Now this gasket does go on dry and the service manual does not specify this, but in all other Subaru vehicles on the rocker cover gaskets, they like a little bit of ultra gray in the corners where the rocker cover makes the 90 over the cam. So I'm just gonna squirt a little bit on the gasket itself, just a, just a dab, you don't need much, just so it uh, hits those corners. Just make sure that they seal because they don't always want to seal with just the gasket alone. Again, we're not globbing it all over. Uh, less is more in this particular case. So there you see just in the four corners, a little glob of Permatex Ultra Gray. And now we're gonna go ahead and set the rocker cover back in place. Just like so. We'll go ahead and open our packet of fresh O-rings, set them in the little recesses, and uh, go ahead and start running our rocker cover bolts back in. Uh, 
hammering or impacting on that, just running them in until they barely touch, just to hold it in place. Uh, all of our bolts are the same length. So no worry about getting them mixed up or confused. There is no specified torque pattern for these bolts, but we're just gonna torque the inner two and then crisscross, same as we do on EJ series uh, head bolts, just so we get a nice even uh, pull down on the cover. Now, the torque specification for these bolts is 0 0.7 uh, kilogram meters, I believe is the specification. Converting that uh, to Newton meters gives about 6.8 Newton meters. So again, we're gonna go ahead and just zip these in. Good there. Go ahead and get our big ratchet out of the mix out of the crankshaft. Now we'll take our torque wrench. Again, set on 6.8 Newton meters. So 6.8 Newton meters. And we'll torque the two inners. Actually, we'll bring them down uh, little by little. We don't want to put one all the way down to torque and have the load of the whole rocker cover on the one. So we'll just go in a crisscrossing pattern here, slowly bringing them all down to that final torque of 6.8 Newton meters. And there we have it, torque to spec, 6.8 Newton meters or 0 0.7 kilogram meters. I think it's kilogram meters or kilogram force meters. I'm not exactly sure. Correct me in the comments, guys. I'm not too up on metric torque specs or units. I'm used to inch pounds, foot pounds being American and uh, Newton meters uh, now that I've been working on Subaru, but uh, not too familiar with that. So, all right, we've got our rocker cover installed, new gasket, torque to specification. Uh, we'll go ahead and reinstall this breather hose. Being careful not to split it. It is a little bit hard, probably needs to be replaced, uh, but uh, you know, it's not cracked or split. So uh, we'll let it ride for now. Put our clamp back in place.
Oh, now that we got that done, we can go ahead and uh, back these little bolts out here, the 10 mils for our ignition wires. Looking in the service manual, it does advise to go ahead and do an oil and filter replacement uh, after doing a rocker cover gasket and valve adjustment, just in case you do knock stuff down into the engine. So the service manual does advise that as well as do I. We can put our ignition wires back onto our spark plugs. Make sure they're all clipping into place on the spark plug. We can pull this 12 mil headed bolt. Reinstall our grounding wire. Snug that down. And we are done with the procedure of adjusting valves and replacing a leaking rocker cover gasket on a Subaru Clover 4 660cc engine in a sandbar wagon truck any of the combinations uh, this basically will cover i believe the subaru um i think it's a vivio there's other there's some front wheel drive subaru uh, k cars that use this engine and drivetrain as well so similar uh, procedure on those and uh, with that we'll basically finish out the video here i do not have an oil filter in uh, stock handy to do with the oil and filter change also i'd like to let that rtv cure for the full 24 hours uh, before having oil circulating in the engine and inside the rocker cover possibly causing uh, you know a leak or to wash that rtv into the oil pan into the high pressure system and have rtv floating around don't want that so i'm going to go ahead and close out the video here thank you guys so much for watching hope you enjoyed and i'll see you in the next video